So you spoke today about how we've seen um, a decline in the number of samples that are sent to the Global Polio Network laboratories that are positive for polio, and how this presents an opportunity to detect other pathogens. How did you decide which pathogens you thought would be best suited to detection by this network? Um, well, the group I'm involved in um, decided that uh, both soil transmitted helminths and um, schistosomes were the best um, targets uh, to go after. This is due to their high prevalence uh, in the communities that we're looking into, and also due to the fact that fecal samples are the uh, traditional sample taken uh, to screen for these using methods like Cato cats um, or fecal concentration methods. So uh, they're the reasons why I think those, those uh, species were taken. Um, the only caveat is that of the two important schistosome species in sub-Saharan Africa, um, only S. mansoni is typically uh, found in fecal samples. So we may be missing um, uh, cases of uh, schistosoma hematobium. Okay, so moving forward to that, you ran a pilot in Ghana looking at these species other than S. hematobium. What did you find in this pilot study? So in the pilot study, we processed um, around 442 uh, fecal samples that had been collected by the Ghanaian Poly Laboratory um, based in uh, Accra. And uh, we found that in total, including all the helminth species we were looking at, uh, we found about a 22% prevalence um, across all samples. Um, the most significant um, uh, species found um, with regards to numbers was um, Ascaris lumbricoides, which is the roundworm. And then following on from that, hookworm was the most common um, and jointly tiered at the end was uh, trichir uh, sorry, not trichiris, was a uh, strongyloides and uh, schistosome. We didn't find any trochiris as well, which is kind of interesting, uh, an interesting observation. And we've also run this same assay on other samples um, that were microscopy positive for trochiris, and these were picked up for the assay as well. So it's not that there's an issue with the assay not detecting trochiris. It looks like there's potentially genuinely little ascaris, in, uh, sorry, little trochiris in, uh, in Ghana. How does the way in which the um, Global Polio Laboratory Network um, gathers samples affect your interpretation of your data? Yeah. So the uh, key requirement for a sample to be um, taken by the Global Polio Laboratory Network and s kind of start the process of uh, getting taken into the network and then analysed and screened for polio is um, clinical symptoms, and this is normally... A, this is acute flaccid paralysis typically found in children. So all the samples that we're collecting um, have that as their uh, origin criteria. So this could be placing a bias one way or the other, because perhaps people who present with acute flaccid paralysis come from a certain region, or um, there's a certain relationship with other infections or, other, or the worms. Um, so it's not a completely um, non-biased approach to sampling. And we're also passively sampling as well, so we're not going to areas that we think might be high risk or we're not in any way in control of how the samples come into the, into the lab. Um, so that's uh, a detail that if this were to be rolled out ideally, um, you need to change the uh, entry criteria for the samples. Um, so. so thinking about that, um broader rollout. Besides changing the entry criteria, how else do you see that things will need to progress moving into the future? Uh, there need to be um, a more dialogue between uh, the participants of our study and the wider global polylaboratory network um, team and uh, a better relationship with regards to how we're sharing information and sharing ideas. So at the moment, uh, it could be argued that it's a little bit one way. We've done the study and we're now presenting the results. Um, and I think it'd be good to hear from the other side, from the Global Polar Laboratory Network, um, what they think of our study, um, 
you know, what are the benefits they can see, what are the uh, disadvantages, um, and also to perhaps start thinking about um, sensible ways for this to be tested. So maybe we will have some uh, reference clinics, so not across the whole country, but in certain districts where the um, requirements for submitting a sample to the lab are extended to include the symptoms of um, STH and schistosomiasis. Um, so it need to be uh, sensible steps put in place um, that both uh, Global Poly Laboratory Network, uh, our team, and as we're working in Ghana, the Ghana Health Service can all get behind as well. Um, so there's probably still a bit of work to be done there um, before we can start really rolling out, if, if at all we feel it should be rolled out.